my dear church family around the world. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. Our blessed hope. We all have hopes. The Bible says that love hopes all things. And to keep us motivated in our journey with Jesus Christ in the desert lands of this world, the Lord in Titus chapter 2 verse 13 tells us about the blessed hope. Let's read Titus 2 verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. When the Bible talks about the blessed hope, a blessed hope here in this case is more than just a hope. It's an assurance that Jesus Christ is coming very soon. I'd like to share an experience that I read many years ago. It talks about a boy who lost his father. His father died and his mother, to comfort the boy, came and told him when Jesus comes, he's going to wake up daddy. The boy was very excited with the, the blessed hope of Jesus' second coming. So later that day, the pastor came to perform the funeral. And when the pastor entered the room with his suit well dressed, the boy ran to the pastor and asked him, are you Jesus? The pastor said, no, I'm not Jesus. The boy asked him, do you know Jesus? The pastor, after pausing for a little while, said, yes, I know Jesus. So please, said the boy, tell him to come soon, because when Jesus comes, he's going to wake up my father. So dear brethren, that boy was very excited and hopeful for the second coming of Jesus to wake up his daddy. How about you? What is your greatest hope? The Word of God in the book Faith I Live By tells us on page 348, paragraph 2, one of the most solemn and yet most glorious truths revealed in the Bible is that of Christ's second coming, to complete the great work of redemption. The doctrine of the second advent is the very keynote of the sacred scriptures. So that is the keynote of the sacred scriptures, the Lord's second coming. The same book, Faith I Live By, page 348, now paragraph 3, says, The coming of the Lord has been in all ages the hope of his true followers. That has been the hope of all the Adventist pioneers. This has been the hope of Adam. This has been the hope of the patriarchs. In Titus chapter 2, verse 13, that we just read, uh, it, uh, this was the favorite verse of William Miller. As we know, he was always preaching about Christ's second coming. Some of the most passionate verse from the Bible is found uh, in Job chapter 19, verse 25 to 27. And I would like to read with you this verse of Job talking about his hope of seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. So Job chapter 19, verse 25 to 27 says, I know that my Redeemer liveth, in that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. In my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. In mine eyes shall behold, and not another. So that was the blessed hope of Job. And he, with the passion, spoke about his hope, his blessed hope of seeing our great Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, coming to take him to a better world than this one. In Faith I Live By, page 348, paragraph 5, says the word of God. The Savior's parting promise upon Olivet that he would come again, lighted up the future for his disciples, filling their hearts with joy and hope that sorrow could not quench nor trials dim. Amid suffering and persecution, the appearing of the great God in our Savior Jesus Christ was the blessed hope. The disciples, they were sad because Jesus was departing 
and uh, they were going to miss him. But when Christ was departing, he spoke to them about his return, and that gave them motivation to continue their preaching, to continue sharing the blessed hope with others that Jesus was coming very soon. The Word of God still tells us the same book, Faith I Live By, page 348, paragraph 6. On Rock Patmos, the beloved disciple hears the promise, Surely I come quickly. And his long response voices the prayer of the church in all her pilgrimage. Even so, come Lord Jesus. So for centuries, the, for thousands of years, the church has been crying and waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ and saying, come Lord Jesus. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The inspiration still tells us that uh, Faith I Live By, page 348, paragraph 7 now. This aged world is not far from its end, said Melanchthon. Calvin bids Christians not to hesitate, ardently desiring the day of Christ's coming as of all events most auspicious. This has been the blessed hope of uh, the reformers, as we have seen here. This day is the day that all believers should long. That's the day that we hope for, that we wait for, as being the accomplishment of all the work, the end of all the work here in this world, in the time for our redemption. Our, our desired, the desired of all ages are, is going to come, and we want to cry with the church of all times, hasten, Lord, for this blessed day. Come and take us from this world. Great Controversy, page 302, tells us about the experience of those that were martyrs, those that were imprisoned. The Word of God, Great Controversy 302, says, From the dungeon, the stake, the scaffold, where saints and martyrs witnessed for the truth, comes down to the centuries, the utterance of their faith and hope, being assured of his personal resurrection and consequently of their own at his coming. For this cause, says one of these Christians, they despised death and were found to be above it. That was the experience of those that uh, were taken to prison, of those that uh, were martyrs. They uh, were thinking more about Christ's second coming than about death. And that kept them motivated to go and suffer what they had to suffer because they knew better days were coming. The Lord was coming one day to take them to a world better than this one. That was uh, the blessed hope of these martyrs, of these brethren that were taken to prison, of these pioneers of the message of God during the Reformation. The Word of God on Christian experience uh, and teachings, page 37, paragraph 1, there tells us a dialogue, a conversation that Robert and uh, Sister White, Robert was uh, Sister White's brother, uh, they went, uh, that, it, it tells the experience of them there, uh, and it says that one day they went to preach about Christ's second coming, to witness about Christ's second coming in one church, and the people rejected their message. The people did not agree with the message of Christ's second coming. And Robert started having some doubts if they, they were being uh, preaching some heresy. And Sister White told him that no, she was sure that it was a present truth for their days, that Christ would be coming soon. And uh, Robert turned to Sister White and he said the following words of Christian experience in teachings, page 37, paragraph 1. What is, has it done for you, Ellen? Would you be what you are now if you had never heard the doctrine of Christ's second, soon coming? What hope has it inspired in your heart? What peace, joy, and love has it given you? And for me, it has done everything. I love Jesus and all Christians. I love the prayer meeting. I find great joy in reading my Bible and in prayer. That was the experience of Robert when he stopped to think what the Blessed Hope had done in his life. He was motivated again. He was encouraged to continue preaching the message of Christ's second coming. And I want to ask you now, what have the Blessed Hope done for you? Has it changed your life? 
let's stop and think what uh, the blessed hope of Christ's second coming has done, has done for us. And it's going to motivate your heart. It's going to motivate my heart to continue journeying with Jesus Christ in this world that's about to finish. And I want you to think every day when you wake up, when you, you are about to go for your daily tasks, to remember that sometimes Christ is going to change your plans during that day because he has better plans to prepare you to meet him very soon. And more than that, let's remember every morning that one day very soon, all the plans of this world are going to be stopped because our blessed hope is going to arrive. Jesus is going to come to deliver us from this world of captivity and take us to the glory of heaven. God has sent to his church signs of hope throughout the ages to remind the church that his promise has not been forgotten. In Matthew chapter 24, God gives some signs to the church to remind us of the soon appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And among the signs that are there in, uh, in, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, we can see there the falling of the stars. Before it, there was the darkening of the sun, the dark day was prophesied there. But before that, those signs, the book of Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 talks about the, a great earthquake that would mark the beginning of the sixth seal. Then the sixth seal has the events, the last events that occur before Christ comes. And I would like to read with you this verse from Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, talking about this great earthquake that would happen in this world. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 says, And I beheld, when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. This great earthquake happened in the year 1755. It is known as the Great Earthquake of Lisbon. And the inspiration explains to us what happened. Great Controversy, page 304, paragraph 2. In the year 1755, the most terrible earthquake that has ever been recorded happened, though commonly known as the earthquake of Lisbon, it extended to the greater part of Europe, Africa and America. It was felt in Greenland, in the West Indies, in the islands of Madeira, in Norway and Sweden, Great Britain and Ireland, engulfing cities and causing great destruction. It continues, at Lisbon, a sound of thunder was heard underground, and immediately afterward a violent shock threw down the greater part of that city. In the course of about six minutes, 60,000 persons perished. The sea first retired and laid the bar dry. It then rolled in, rising 50 feet above its original level. That was a terrible event that happened that day in Lisbon. 60,000 people was a great part of the population of the city. The city was found uh, like uh, most of it had been destroyed. And right after that, then came the sign, one of the signs given by Christ in, the, in Matthew 24, that was the sun darkening. It was November 19. 1780. In the inspiration, Great Controversy, page 306, tells us an unexplained phenomenon that the darkness was not due to an eclipse is evident from the fact that the moon was then nearly full. It was not caused by clouds or the thickness of the atmosphere, for in some localities where the darkness extended, the sky was so clear that the stars could be seen, concerning the inability of science to assign a satisfactory cause for this manifestation. Herschel, the astronomer, declares, the dark day in North America was one of those wonderful phenomena of nature which philosophy is at loss to explain. 
that was the dark day that happened in that year, 1780, marking this one of the events that was prophesied by Christ, that Christ would come. One of the events that would be inside of the period of the sixth seal, marking that Christ was, is about to come. Brethren, God in his mercy has sent us sign after sign, telling us that Christ is coming soon. He started encouraging the church with these signs long time ago. And once again, uh, he gave another sign. It was the falling of the stars. The inspiration says, Matthew 24, verse 29, And the stars shall fall from heaven. It was also shown to John in a vision, and he wrote it in Revelation chapter 6, verse 13. And I'm going to read this verse with you from Revelation chapter 6, verse 13, says the word of God. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaking of a might wind. As we have said, these events are inside of the sixth seal. And after the appearing of the sun, uh, the, the darkening of the sun, in the falling of the stars, then the Bible tells us that the next event will be uh, Christ's second coming. Uh, just before Christ comes, there is this event when, this, the, the, uh, when heaven is going to roll up as a scroll, says the, the Bible there in Revelation chapter 6. So uh, we are brethren living these days of the end, when all the signs are being fulfilled, have, many have been fulfilled, and the last ones are being fulfilled now. And the inspiration is still talking about the falling of the stars, uh, tells us that it was seen in many places as no other falling of the stars have ever been. God in his mercy gave to the believers another sign yet. It was the explanation of the prophecy uh, that's found in Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9 tells us about the sixth trumpet and God revealed uh, what would be happening uh, in the end of the period uh, that is prophesied there in, uh, in the sixth uh, trumpet. And I would like to read with you the explanation of this period of prophecy about it. Great Controversy, page 334 and 335, says the word of God. In the year 1840, Another remarkable fulfillment of prophecy excited widespread interest. Two years before, it means 1938, Josiah Leach, one of the leading ministers preaching the Second Advent, published an exposition of Revelation 9, predicting the fall of the Ottoman Empire. 11th of August, 1840, when the Ottoman power in Constantinople may be expected to be broken. At the very time specified, Turkey, through her ambassadors, accepted the protection of the allied powers of Europe and thus placed herself under the control of Christian nations. The event exactly fulfilled the prediction. Here, I want to tell you, ask you, brethren, have you stopped to think why God has given all the signs to the church? There is a reason. God in his infinite wisdom, he knew that the church would need encouragement. The church would be, need to be reminded of the blessed hope in that he has not forgotten his promise that he has made to you and to me and to all the believers throughout history. In his infinite wisdom, God uh, warned us that in the last days people would be discouraged and people in the world would be scoffing mocking those that would believe in the coming of Christ, because to them it seems to be taking too long. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 says, Second Peter chapter 3 verse 3 and 4, I'm going to read this verse with you. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue, as they were from the beginning of the creation. Therefore, brethren, knowing that the church would go through these trials, 
that people would doubt Christ's second coming and would mock those that would be waiting for his coming. The Lord sent these signs of hope to encourage you, to encourage me, to encourage all of us to continue walking with Jesus with the assurance that God has not forgotten his promise, that he's coming to take us to live with him. Today, once again, God is showing us through the things that are happening in this world, the fulfillment of prophecies. He's showing the signs that Christ is coming and coming very soon. One of the signs given in the Bible is found in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. It says, Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 says the word of God. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How are things in the days of Noah? Immorality, prostitution, homosexuality, adultery, people killing one another, murders of all kinds. And it has become so prevalent today also in our society. It is enough to wake up, this, uh, wake us up and see the danger of this world. This world is driving itself to destruction. Brethren, however, Satan is uh, bringing all these calamities in this world with the intention to destroy souls, to lead, lead, uh, take souls that are unprepared, unprepared to perdition. God has a better plan for you and for me. He has a better plan for all the inhabitants of this world, and we have the opportunity to choose today what side we are going to be. The intention of the enemy is to destroy, but all these calamit calamities and uh, accidents and diseases that are coming upon this world, God is only allowing it to help us see the time we are living in, to help us see that prophecies have, are being fulfilled, the last ones, and this world is coming to its end. In Desire of Ages, page 636, paragraph 1, we found there a description of the days we are living in. And I want to read with you this paragraph, Desire of Ages, 636, Paragraph 1. Everything in the world is in agitation. The signs of the times are ominous. Coming events cast their shadows before. The Spirit of God is withdrawing from the earth. In calamity follows calamity. By sea and by land, there are tempests, earthquakes, fires, floods, murders of every grade. Who can read the future? Where is security? Where is assurance? In nothing there is assurance in nothing that is human or earthly. Rapidly are men ranging themselves under the banner they have chosen. There is no security in anything of this world. All man's security is, uh, can fail us anytime. We can only have assurance and security in Jesus Christ. Only our God can keep us safe in this world and take us to live with him in paradise. This world is going to finish. Just this, week's, uh, this week, as I'm uh, I was preparing this sermon, we heard about the accident in Lebanon and uh, hundreds of people probably die in that big explosion. So man cannot keep us safe. Life here is uncertain, but there is a life that's better than this one that is certain with our Lord Jesus Christ. Desire of Age 636 continues saying, Restlessly, are they waiting and watching the movements of their leaders? So the inhabitants of this world are watching for the movements of their leaders. There are those who are waiting and watching and working for our Lord's appearing. Another class are falling into line under generalship of the first great apostate. Few believe with heart and soul that we have a hell to shun and a heaven to win. Very few people believe that Christ is coming, that there is a better world than this one here. Oh, what amazing God we have. What amazing love he has showed towards us. Humanity he rejecting him, and he still keeps hope in the human beings of this world. He's still working to save us from the perils that are coming upon this world. People worry 
about tomorrow. They worry about environment. They worry about they are going to dress tomorrow. People are worried about diseases that are coming upon this world. Accidents, unexpected events that are happening every day. And people are concerned. But those that have Jesus on their side have no uh, need to worry because we are just passing through this world and our blessed hope, our Lord Jesus Christ, is coming and He's coming very soon. And dear brethren, despite all concerns that people may have, I have good news for all of us. There is a solution for family problems. There is a solution for environmental problems. There is a solution for war problems. There, are solution, there is a solution for corruption in this world. There is a solution for immorality. The solution is Jesus Christ. The desire of ages, He is coming. Our blessed hope is at the door. He promised Himself that He is coming and His word is sure. In John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, we have his promise that he's made to his churches, to his church, to his followers, to his disciples. He said, John chapter 14, verse, uh, verse 1 to 3, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If, there were, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there it may also be. I want to ask you now personally, and I want you to think about the experience of that little boy that lost his father and told the pastor, asked the pastor to tell Jesus to come very soon. Are you as excited for the coming of Jesus as was that boy. Are you waiting for Jesus, the blessed hope of all ages, to come very soon? I want to tell you, don't put your trust, your hope in the things of this world. Everything here is going to finish very soon. But Jesus has a better world to give to you. The Spirit of Prophecy, talking, st still talking about the great earthquake of Lisbon, tells us an interesting story of something that happened there that day. And I want to read with you this short story. The most extraordinary circumstances which occur occurred at Lisbon during the catastrophe was the subsidence of the new quay. The quay was a platform built entirely of marble at an immense expense. A great concourse of people had collected there for safety, as a spot where they might be beyond the reach of falling ruins. But suddenly, the quay sank, sank down with all the people in it, and none of the dead bodies ever floated to the surface. What a tragic event. People ran to that platform made of marble, that was made with great expense, thinking that there they would be safe. Today also in this world, people are accumulating wealthy. People are accumulating uh, wealth. They are accumulating houses. They are accumulating all things they can, trying to protect themselves from the future. But all the things of this world is like that platform in Lisbon. It's, they are going to be destroyed. And they will not be able to save anyone. But Jesus Christ, our blessed hope, can save us. In God's hand, we are safe. There is no action of our lives in which God is not concerned. Let me read to you upward Luke, page 87, paragraph 5. There is no action of our lives in which God is not concerned, no interest which is not Precious in his sight. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. God is the shield and buckler of his people. He spreads his hands above his trusting children. And no one can wound a child of his without smiting the hand of God. Dear brethren, what a beautiful promise the Lord is giving to us here. He says he is holding you and I in his hands.
and that no one can touch one of his children without first hurting him, hitting his hand. So God is protecting you. You don't need to fear about the future. God is going to take care of you. He's going to hold you if you just trust in him. If we are faithful to him, he's going to protect us from all the events coming upon this world so we can rejoice in Jesus Christ and be happy. And before closing, for closing of this sermon, I want to remember with you how the spirit of prophecy describes the coming of Christ in the book Great Controversy. I'm not going to read it, but I want us to meditate how it's going to be together here. The spirit of prophecy tells us that Christ will leave heaven with angels and he's going to come in a chariot. And uh, the inspiration says that that chariot is a big chariot that has wheels and those wheels will be singing as Christ comes down to this earth. The wheels are singing because they are formed by angels. Once Christ approaches this planet, he's going to stop in the air and he's going to call those that are sleeping. He's going to call those beloved ones that we one day have lost to death in this world that we miss so much. And he's going to call them. And together with those that are alive, we are all going to go up and meet Christ in the clouds of heaven. And we will start a journey towards heaven. This journey is going to last approximately seven days. And when we reach the glassy sea, there is going to be the most beautiful meeting ever. And brethren, I want to be there more than everything. I want you to be there more than everything. In that meeting, the saved ones, they are going to form a square. In the middle of this square is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Adam goes to meet Christ. And the two Adams meet each other in the middle of that square. The multitude of saints are forming this square. And Jesus Christ, he starts calling the name of each one of the saved ones to give us a crown. The Spirit of prophecy says that God, Christ, with his right hand, He's going to put the crown in the head of each one of the saved, the saved ones. Dear brother, I don't know how Christ is going to do it. But he's omnipresent, he's omnipotent, he's omniscient, and he can do it. He's going to put the crown in your head and in my head. And I can only imagine being there and waiting, expecting Christ to call my name, to give me my crown. And he's going to be calling you, calling somebody else. He's going to be calling people, John, Mary. Philip, he's going to be calling the multitude there and I'm waiting for him to call my name. And one time will come, that moment when he's going to call my name and the Bible says he's going to give me a crown, he's going to give me a harp and I'm going to pray this harp. That's another miracle Christ is going to make in my life. I cannot pray harp today, but in that day I will be able to pray, to play it. That Christ will continue making miracles in my life there on the glass of sea. He's going to make it for you also. Christ is, wants to put that crown in your head and in my head. Dear brother, dear sister, do you want to be there? And after this ceremony of coronation, then Christ is going to lead us to his kingdom in heaven. We are going to enter the portals of heaven in well, once we enter the portals of heaven, the Spirit of Prophecy tells us what is going to happen. And I want to close with this paragraph now. The Spirit of Prophecy in Great Controversy, page 646 says, Before the ransom throng is the holy city, Jesus opens wide the pearly gates, and the nations that have kept the truth enter in. There they behold the paradise of God, the home of Adam in his innocence. Then that voice, richer than any music that ever fell on mortal ear, is heard saying, Your conflict is ended. Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. My dear brethren, oh, how I want to be there to listen to these words of, these words of Jesus saying, Your conflict is ended. Jesus Christ, my blessed hope, your blessed hope. May Jesus be all the motivation of my heart and of your heart. 
that his, this blessed hope of his second come may motivate us to continue journey with him in this world. And very soon we may journey with him in the golden streets of heaven. May Jesus be a reality in your life and in my life. Amen.